hundred-year-old photograph stares out from a frame. And if you look real close, you'll see her eyes are just the same. Never met them face to face, but I still know them well from the stories my dear grandma would tell. They're fine guardian angels, and I know they can see. Every step I take, they are watching over me. I'd not know where I'm going, but I'm sure where I come from. They're my guardian angel, and I'm their special one. Hubert Turbis was born September 17, 1818, in Meyerode, Rhenish Prussia, Germany, which is now Belgium. He married 16-year-old Anna Grosjean from Manderfeld in 1841, and together they had seven children. After fierce windstorms devastated crops in Manderfeld, the Turbis family decided to emigrate from Malmedy to America in 1857. This is a photograph of Anna Grosjean Turbis and her second husband, Matthias Hillesheim. For you see, Hubert Turbis died in June of 1857, the same year that he, Anna, and their seven children emigrated to America. They made it by stagecoach to Toma, Wisconsin, and apparently ran out of money. The story goes that Hubert carried little Christian in his arms as they walked the whole way from Toma to St. Paul, on to St. Peter, and then New Ulm. For three years, widowed Anna Turbis raised the children by herself, and then in 1860, married Matthias Hildesheim, who lost his first wife in passage to America. Two years after Anna and Matt wed, the Sioux conflict erupted in Brown County. Peter Turbis, Christian's older brother, shown here with his wife, Mary Josephine Hillesheim, entered Company B, 1st Battalion of the Brown County Militia to help protect homesteaders near New Ulm. At the time of his first enlistment, he was 14 years, 9 months old. His parents, Anna and Matt, packed all their belongings and headed by wagon train for Mankato. When they returned to New Ulm, they found their home burned to the ground. John Turbis, Christian's oldest brother, pictured here with his wife Helen Ross, and his brother Peter, both served in the United States Army for the duration of the Civil War. This is Christian Turbis and his wife Anna Ross, who was also born in Manderfeld, Rhenish Prussia, though two years earlier than Christian. Her family emigrated to America in 1868, 11 years after the Turbis family left the old country. Christian and Anna had 10 children, four girls and six boys. Margaret Mary died at the age of seven. Standing from left to right are Nick, Gertrude, George, Anna, Matthias, Magdalene, and Hubert, seated are Christian Jr., Christian, Anna, and John. Hubert Henry Turbis was their second oldest son, born February 8, 1884. Here he is with siblings Anna, Gertrude, Matt, and George. 
Sebastian Schmitz remains a mystery. We don't know the date of his birth, but we believe he was born in Luxembourg because he came from a Luxembourg settlement in Decatur, Wisconsin. We know he married 19-year-old Margaret Steffen in 1864. Margaret was born in Oberweiss, Germany. They had 12 children, but only five survived into adulthood, two daughters and three sons. Joseph Schmitz on the left settled in Montana. Lawrence, or Lawrence on the right, became the sheriff of Osaki County and later moved to Milwaukee where he started the Kirk Hardwater Soap Company. Bernard Schmitz in the center was born August 31, 1869 in Decatur, Wisconsin. In nearby Holy Cross, Wisconsin, he met and married Anna Schmidt on February 20th, 1892. Anna was the daughter of John Schmidt, born in Eichen, Luxembourg in 1830, and Maria Siebenhaller, born in 1832 in Gravelingen, Luxembourg. Together they had 12 children. This photograph was taken at John and Maria's 50th wedding anniversary in 1904. Standing from left to right are Dominic, Mary, Nicholas, John, Pauline, and Peter. Seated from left to right are Marguerite, Frank, John, Anna, Maria, Michael, and Matthew. Bernard and Anna Schmitz moved from Holy Cross, Wisconsin to Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, where Madeline, their first child, was born on March 11, 1893. For the next four years, they lived in Morgan, where Joseph, then Bernard, and Pat were born. Pat on the left was baptized Balthusius after his great uncle, Balthazar, the brother of Margaret Stephan. Joseph in the middle died at the age of 10, and Bernard on the right was always called Ben. In 1899, Josephine, the youngest, was born in Hastings, Minnesota. In 1900, the Schmitz family moved to Obasso, where Bernard, more commonly called Barney, opened a saloon. And in, eight, in 1903, he was appointed the village marshal a position he held for three years. The children received a Catholic education at St. Anne's Church. Pat, Josephine, and Ben were in a school play. In 1911, Barney entered the dray and road contracting business. The dray business meant hauling goods in a horse-drawn wagon Sons Ben and Pat and other day laborers helped Barney move houses and harvest ice off Dobes Lake. Eventually, road contracting became Barney's major interest. Madeline only went through the fourth grade. Back then, a young lady didn't need more than the basic skills because women generally didn't work outside the home. But Madeline was a liberated woman, and an enterprising one at that. Here she is in the dark suit, second from the right, with her sister Josephine to her left and two friends. At the age of 18, and with her father's financial help, Madeline opened a millinery shop on Wabasso's main street. She employed Gertrude Turbis and others. Together, they made the hats they sold. Earlier, Hubert attended Mankato Commercial College, learning Spencerian script and how to be a bookkeeper and an accountant. He managed the Nelson Rydell clothing store, and then his own clothing store, the city clothing and shoe store, right next to Madeline's millinery shop. Madeline and Hubert became very good friends. 
Here in front of the millinery store is Madeline in the light dress and Hubert behind her on the right. In front of Hubert's store, Madeline is on the far left. Hubert is second from the right, holding an iron. Madeline was a beautiful young lady, and Hubert, who was nine years her senior, was infatuated. In April 1906, she was only 13 years old when Hubert wrote in her autograph book three separate entries. Remember me as one of the sports of the happy four in the year of our Lord, 1905. That made the town of Obasso feel a little jolly then. Be true to your honey, Maud, and be true what is to follow. As we all know, that is the most principal to do in order to lead a happy life on earth. And finally, dear Maud, as I am here yet at last to tell you in the forecast, everybody should be gay and happy when he or she is young and single. But in the future, we may be much happier when we live by two in ease. Your friend, H.H. H. Turbis. His forecast came true, and on November 25th, 1913, Hubert Henry Turbis and Madeline Barbara Schmitz were married in St. Anne's Catholic Church. Gertrude Turbis was the maid of honor, and Benjamin Schuler was the best man. From 1914 through 1915, Hubert served as the village recorder, and he was a member of the local band for many years. At times, he was the band's leader. On April 11th, 1915, Veronica Magdalene was born. On October 16th, 1917, Sylvester George was born. Sylvester and Veronica loved to play church in their attic and go on picnics with the family. And in winter, sledding. Veronica enjoyed chasing after fire trucks most likely because her father was a member of the Wabasso Volunteer Fire Department for many years. Concerned with safety, Hubert tied sheets together for an upstairs fire escape. And in the winter, he tied a rope from the back door to the outhouse so no one would lose their way during a blizzard. With the outbreak of World War I, men weren't buying dress clothes, so Hubert closed down his store. Madeline sold her millinery shop, and with the profits from the two stores and some of Bernard's money, Hubert invested in wheat farms in North Dakota. The severe drought of 1917 and two years of terrible harvests resulted in lo their losing all their investment. During this time, Hubert was employed as a bookkeeper in Wabasso's Citizen State Bank, while Madeline tended to Cy and Veronica. Rosemarie was born on December 9, 1925. The Great Depression hit the farming communities years before the stock market crash of 1929. One bank in Wabasso had already closed when the Citizen State Bank let Hubert go in 1927 and evicted his family from the house which was owned by the bank. The house on the left became their home for the next three years when they went to live with Grandpa Barney and Grandma Anna Schmitz. Hubert tried selling insurance to the poor farmers, but when that didn't work, he joined Barney's road crew at the time as keeper and accountant. It was a family business now, B.J. Schmitz and Sons, with 10 teams of horses and employing many local people here, Nick Barton, Barney's nephew, and his, and his daughter, Lorraine, were visiting from Chicago. Madeline cooked for the road crew in this cook shack. Pat and Ben worked with their father, Barney, until his death in 1936. Pat continued with the business, but replaced the horses with trucks and tractors. 
That's Lorraine Martin and her mom, Alice, on the right. Veronica would help her mom and look after little Rosie. Rosie loved her kitten. Cy pumped water for the horses for 25 cents a day, and for Grandma Anna, he would milk her cow and fetch wood for the stove. Meanwhile, Josephine grew into a beautiful young woman. She loved to dote on her nephew and nieces, buying them gifts like these dolls. Josephine fell in love with Harry Cook, and they were married in Tyndall, South Dakota on May 24, 1924. Harry was a graduate of the Chicago School of Embalming and had a successful furniture and undertaking business in Tyndall. After son Jack was born, they moved to Wabasso and lived next door to the Schmitz. Harry opened his web oil station while continuing with his undertaking business. Son Bill was born in 1929 in their new home shown here. The boys spent a lot of time playing with the Turbis children and cousin Lorraine Martin. Hubert and his family would visit his father Christian and mother Anna Turbis on their farm in Willow Lake Township near Wanda. Cy and Veronica loved to play with the loud dinner bell that hung on their front porch. They all would gather around the piano that Aunt Gertie played and they'd sing Civil War songs. Christian had a successful farm, but retired after an injury that left him blind in one eye. He was repairing the harnesses with his own machine when the needle broke and struck him in the eye. George Turbis, Hubert's younger brother, who had been mustard gassed in World War I, took over the farm. On Hubert's suggestion, Christian visited the bank to check on his finances, found out they, weren't, they were doing poorly. He suffered a stroke and died right then and there in the bank. It was March 23, 1929. Harry Cook was the undertaker for Christian. Beginning in 1930, Hubert worked at the Goblish store in Wabasso. After Barney Schmitz died in 1936, Hubert and Carl Jensen bought a liquor store in Springfield and the family moved there. The liquor store didn't work out, so Hubert went back to work for the Goblishes and later managed the municipal liquor store in Vesta until after World War II. 